I'm going to talk a little bit about the logic of contract and how everything is contract and how if you enter into a contract or facilitate a contract, especially where value exchange is concerned, you must know the terms and conditions of the contract. If not, then you are participating in the contract via coercion, nascience, or maliciousness. So an example of this would be the water bill. And I'll take this from first-hand knowledge. You take your water bill down to the township building to pay it. On the envelope, it says occupant. On every uh, envelope in, in my area, that's what it says. It's addressed to the occupant. Now, what does occupant mean? Well, you can look that up and find out for yourself what it means, the many different meanings. You can look Black's Law Dictionary, a regular dictionary, Webster's 1828, whatever you want. Find out what it means. I went in there and I asked the person at the desk at the township building, why does that say occupant and who is that? What is an occupant? And we went through this whole rigmarole of, uh, oh, you know, a dog can be an occupant, a person can be an occupant. So who's it addressed to? And we had a nice laugh about it. She ended up getting her supervisor and the supervisor could not give me closure on what that means. So I'm basically saying to them, so you have no knowledge of your own contract and you're trying to facilitate an exchange of money and you don't know what the hell's going on. You don't know the terms and conditions of your own contract. Not to mention the military implications of the word occupant. You must define your terms and conditions for an honorable contract. It makes some, for some very uh, humorous scenarios and it also illustrates my main point in this in that the majority of contracts entered into in this world are based upon presumption and assumption. And in that scenario, money is basically extorted via coercion and nascience. And you can go as far as to look at taxes for that. Peace.